Hello and welcome back to awtoolbox.com. My name is Glenn Keller and I'll be an instructor in this demonstration as well as the rest of the demonstrations in our Using Active Workspace Essentials for Team Center 2412 course. This course is designed for you as a user to take you through what Active Workspace is, how it can help you, navigating the interface as well as getting into some of the little tools and nuances you can use to perform your everyday jobs. So to begin with, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to break down a couple of things. We're going to look at what Active Workspace is. We're going to look at legacy software that you may be tra transitioning from and compare the two. We're going to get you logged into Active Workspace. And then we're going to take a brief look at some of your login settings as well as your home page, which you see on the screen, some simple topics about commands, as well as a very brief introduction to searching. So as we go through this video, we'll expand on each one of those a little bit more, but we're going to keep these at a very high level to get you going right away. So first of all, Active Workspace is a browser-based client that is available with the Team Center software. This client is a newer client, and if you've been working with Team Center for a long time, you may be more familiar with the legacy client, which is called the Rich Client. Now, this is still widely used for more robust users or administrators to perform their tasks, but a lot of the functionality is getting ported over to Active Workspace as the years go on. So, this is the Rich Client, and we're not going to be talking about this one in this course, but this take a look at some of our other courses on using the rich client to get help if you do need to work with the rich client interface for now i'm going to minimize that out of the way active workspace is a browser-based client that your company is going to provide you to be able to work with the data that you need to work with to perform your everyday tasks so if you're not using active workspace or haven't been told to you might not be in the right course however when using Active Workspace, just note, because it is browser-based, it's very lightweight. It doesn't take any room to install this on the box. There are some add-on applications that you can use, integrations like with the NX software, Katia software, or other types of CAD CAM integrations that are available. But Active Workspace itself is just, let's call it a website. So in here, when you get started, you'll be provided a URL. You'll notice I have a URL in here, and that's made up of a server, a port, and some whatever page I'm on after the fact. So if you are provided a URL, that's how you're going to access it. If you are installing Active Workspace and you're kind of taking this course to learn the ropes, uh, just note that you'll provide this or define it as you're building up the interface. Once you have your URL, you're gonna enter it into the browser. You can use Chrome, Edge, or what have you. In today's world, a lot of the browsers are supported, Safari, Chrome, Edge, um, so definitely take a look at what you have. I like Google Chrome, and that's what I'm gonna be utilizing for most of my explanations, topics, and overviews, but just note that Microsoft Edge is also available and has all the same capabilities. If I expand this out, once you're provided the URL for the login, then place it in the browser and hit enter. Now, depending on what your company has set up for the software, two, one of two things is going to happen, potentially three. So when you go to log in in a default environment with no additional configuration and you're trying to get into Active Workspace, it's going to take you to a page like this. This is just the basic sign-on page, and if it takes you here, you'll provide the credentials you've been supplied to access the software. In our case, it's user01. Uh, you can click login, and then at that point, it'll take you to the home page that you've been assigned. Now, all the home pages look a little different depending on who you are, so definitely make sure you take an inventory of all the tiles that are on your page, which are these icons over here and all the commands that you have available up on the left hand side. Once you do that, you can also take note that up in the top right corner, you'll see a search bar. Uh, you can type various strings or IDs or names or attribute values, whatever you have in there. Just note that you can also pull down the dropdown 
you can select and filter out your search results so that this, the search runs a little quicker because you're only searching within the scope of a specific type of data. You can also see if there's an active change at play, so everything you're doing is kind of impacting that change. You can see any notifications, like maybe you generated a report and it hadn't finished yet. When it does, it'll pop up here. You can also see this little settings menu, which will allow you to change the comfort comfortability of the software as well as turning on labels like that. So you can see over on the left hand side, all the labels are now gone off of these icons. And then if I turn it back on, then you'll see the labels are here. Now, as you get more familiar with the software, you may note that you can take those labels off as you go down the road. Um, but leaving the labels on does help it be a little bit clearer. You can also turn on things like logging, uh, monitoring, and you can see help information here. Just note, we'll go through each one of these commands in a future video, um, but just kind of a quick reference. Finally, the U up here is basically the first letter of my user ID. So if I click this little circle icon, this is my user profile. So once you're logged in, you can go to project and select a project and then everything that you create or work with will be in the scope of that project. You can work with revision rules and this tunes the system as a whole to only show you certain revisions as they're configured. You may have company specific revision rules that you've been assigned to use as the specific group and role. If you don't, just note that you're looking at what revisions, if an object has five revisions on it, and you want to see only the latest working revision and none of the released ones in all of your searches and everything that you see on the display, then you would pick latest working here. Um, if you don't want that, then you need to select a different one. The group and role that you have logged in as, most of the time there'll be a default group and role. You can see I'm engineering designer in here. That default group and role is going to be the one that you use the most frequently in the system. And if you use one more frequently than the one you've been assigned, you may want to take a have a talk with the administrators to get you repositioned. If you have multiple groups and roles available to you, you can switch between them in this location. And then the interface will update and you won't have to log out or log in. There's other options here as well. One of the biggest ones is displaying the session settings at the bottom of the page. If you click that little toggle, essentially it will take all of that data and shove it all the way down to the bottom of the interface. So you can change between pages here and keep that up and work with it if you need to switch between them. And just note that you can also remove it with the little X right here. Finally, you can sign out of the interface. So if I sign out, we need to take a look at option two for the login. So when you're logging in, we saw what happens if we log in with a manual username and password. And if you log in the other way uh, that we're going to talk about here in a second, it will also take you to all of the features that we just talked about. The only difference is, is if you are logging in with a security card, like a CAC or a PKI card or something along those lines, then you will still get a URL provided to you to access the software. But instead of getting this page here, you're probably going to get your standard policy or access page that you need to authenticate with your PKI card or your token um, and then once it authenticates you, it will automatically take you to that homepage. So that's the alternate way. The third option you may see is just an error message on the page saying you can't log in. But let's hope that doesn't happen. I'm going to log back in here, get back into the software. And then once I'm in the software, just note that there's also a couple of things that you can do to quickly navigate throughout the software. So first of all, the Explorer is kind of like your desktop. So think of the Explorer as a place that you can create shortcuts to data and be able to reference for folders and uh, save searches and other types of events that you may kick off. 
So if I select this, this is called a tile, and it will navigate me to another location. Now, please note that not all the tiles are going to navigate you somewhere. Some of them will do something, like create an object. But once you get to that location, you can see how the software changes to display the data in a better way. If I use the commands on the left-hand side, the global commands, you can see this home icon up at the top, and if I select that, it will take me back to the home. You could also hit the back button here for Explorer to go back to Explorer and then back to home. As we get into this software a little bit more, you'll learn that we can actually experience and work with different things like 3D data. We can investigate entire assemblies and see related data to the assemblies and manipulate them, duplicate them. We can work with workflows and your administrators can do all of those things kind of on the back end as well. Um, but this is a very robust piece of software that's going to be provided in the client to you. And as we go through this course, we'll start ticking off the checkboxes of each of the different things that you can do utilizing this new lightweight client.